Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for joining me for story time today. My name is Carrie, and today I would like to read you a book called Goldie Luck and the Three Pandas by Natasha Yim, illustrated by Grace Zong. This book is about our main character, Goldie Luck, celebrating Chinese New Year with her family as well as with her neighbors. Um, Chinese New Year is one of my favorite holidays to spend time with my family, so I hope you enjoyed the story. When Goldilock was born, her mother said, Year of the Golden Dragon, very lucky year. This child will have good luck. She has a face as round as a gold coin, said her father. This child will bring great wealth. But Goldie had neither great wealth nor good luck. In fact, she could never seem to keep money in her piggy bank, and she had a bad habit of breaking things. One Chinese New Year, Goli's mother woke her up and sent her to wish their neighbors Gung Hei Fa Choi. But Mama, I'm still sleepy and I'm so hungry. It will only take a minute, her mother said. Mr. and Mrs. Chan would enjoy a visit from you. Take these turnip cakes to share with little Chan. He never shares stuff with me, muttered Goldie. It's a new year, her mother warned. Wash away old arguments and be nice, or you'll have bad luck. Not more bad luck. Last year, she lost the red envelope her grandmother had given her, and her best friend moved away. I wonder how she lost her red envelope. So Goldie walked next door to the Chan's apartment. She knocked on the door, no answer. She knocked again, still no answer. Goldie gave the door a little push. It swung open and she tumbled in, dropping the plate. Turnip cakes catapulted all over the floor. Oh no, Goldie cried. A whole plate of turnip cakes ruined. That was bad luck for sure. She wandered into the kitchen to find a broom. On the table were three steaming bowls of kanji. A ceramic bowl, a wooden bowl, and a plastic bowl. Her tummy grumbled. Here you can see three bowls of uh, kanji here. Kanji is a porridge that's made out of rice. It's very similar to the oatmeal we eat for breakfast. Surely nobody would mind if she had one little bite of rice porridge. She sampled the kanji from the ceramic bowl. Ugh, too watery. She tasted the kanji from the wooden bowl. Yuck, too thick and clumpy. Then she slurped some kanji from the plastic bowl. Mmm, just right. Before she knew it, she had eaten it all up. All that kanji made Goldie even sleepier than she already was. Maybe she could just rest a bit and wait for the chance. She walked into the living room and saw three chairs. She plunked down on Mr. Chan's massage chair. Something hard seemed rolled up and down her back. Ouch, she cried, spring to her feet. Too rough. Next. She plopped into Mrs. Chan's armchair and disappeared into the fluffy pillows. She felt like stuffing in a pork bun. Oof, she mumbled. Too soft. Then she squeezed herself into Little Chan's rocking chair. Whee! she shouted as she rocked back and forth. But she pushed too hard and the chair somersaulted backwards. It hit the floor with a splintering crash. Oh no, Goldie exclaimed, seven years bad luck. 
Or was that a mirror? In either case, she was still so sleepy. She ambled into the bedroom to find a place to lie down. Just for a few minutes, she reasoned. She climbed into a king-size bed. The mattress felt as hard as a week-old almond cookie. Err, too uncomfortable. Next, she flopped onto a queen-size bed. The electric bed began to fold her up like a dumpling. Yikes! Too scary, she cried. Then she leaped off and settled onto Little Chan's futon. Ah, just right, she sighed, and fell fast asleep. The Chan's finally returned home. Who dropped these turnip cakes all over the floor, exclaimed Mr. Chan. And then clean it up, added Mrs. Chan. A whole plate of turnip cakes ruined, groaned Little Chan. They headed into the kitchen. Hey, who's been eating my kanji? demanded Mr. Chan. And who's been eating my kanji? cried Mrs. Chan. Little Chan wailed. I don't have any kanji. Someone's eating mine all up. Mr. Chan heard a humming in the living room. He went to investigate. Someone's turned on the massage chair, he bellowed. And someone's rumpled the cushions on my armchair, yelled Mrs. Chan. I don't even have a chair, shouted little Chan. It's been smashed to pieces. When the three Chans looked into the bedroom, Mr. Chan hollered, Someone's been sleeping in my bed. And someone's been sleeping in my bed, squealed Mrs. Chan. Look, said little Chan, it's Goldilocks sleeping on my futon. Goldie jerked awake. Who could sleep with all that yelling going on? Mr. and Mrs. Chan, she cried. I didn't mean to fall asleep. In a fluster, she jumped out of bed and dashed home. Her mother had set out kanji for her breakfast. Goldie was just about to take a bite when she thought of little Chan, who didn't have any more rice porridge in his bowl. I'm not really that hungry, she said to her mother. She went to read a book in her rocking chair. As she rocked back and forth, she thought of little Chan, who didn't have a chair to sit in anymore. I'm still sleepy. I think I'll go to bed, she said. Goldie climbed into her nicely made bed. She thought of the pillows and blankets she had strewn about the Chan's bedroom. Goldie jumped up and ran back to the kitchen. She grabbed her bowl of kanji and rushed back to the Chan's apartment. I didn't mean to break little Chan's rocking chair, she said to Mr. Chan. I'll help you glue it back together. I'll fix the blankets I messed up, she said to Mrs. Chan, and make the beds. Goldie handed her bowl of kanji to little Chan. I'm sorry I ate all your rice porridge she said, and drop all of those turnip cakes. That's okay, Goldie, said little Chan shyly. We were just about to make some more. Would you like to help? And here you'll see them in the kitchen making more turnip cakes. And little Chan here is stirring a bowl, and we have some scallions right here, which you would put into the turnip cake. Scallions are um, similar to what we call green onions. So Goldie and Little Chan chopped, stirred, and steamed lots and lots of turnip cakes. Then they fried them up nice and crunchy for the New Year feast. Mrs. Chan handed Goldie a red envelope. 
Gung Hei Fa Choi, Goldie, she said. May the new year bring you great wealth and good luck. Thank you, Goldie said, but I think I found some good luck already. She smiled at little Chan, and the two friends sat down together to eat a whole plate of turnip cakes. Thank you so much for joining me for story time today. Ho I hope you enjoyed the story and learned a little more about the Chinese New Year culture. I'll see you soon for next story time. Bye.